Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, director of the Miami Space Transit Planetarium, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now this week's episode. The two false comets of Scorpius and how to find them. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. Everyone loves it when news of an approaching comet hits the press. And although I'd love to announce that there's a big comet coming, such is not the case. I can, however, show you how to find two objects which are comet imposters and have fooled many people into thinking they were real. I call them the two false comets of Scorpius. Okay, we've got our skies set up for any night this week and next in early evening when there'll be no moonlight to hide these two phonies from view because you have to have dark skies to see them. Simply look south just after dark and you will see a fishhook shaped group of stars which is called Scorpius the Scorpion, which is one of the few star patterns which actually looks like its name. In fact, it even has a bright red star right where its heart should be. Then, if you follow the scorpion's body down around its tail and up to its stinger, you'll be able to see two tiny fuzzy clouds, which look exactly like the heads of comets when they're far away and on their approach to Earth. In fact, most comets, as they make their journey toward our Earth and Sun, always look like tiny Q-tips nestled among the stars. But Q-tips which move from night to night and get bigger and bigger as they get closer and closer and eventually develop incredibly beautiful gas and dust tails. But not these two tiny fuzzy clouds because unlike comets, these two will never develop tails and they will never ever move in relation to the stars and they'll never get any bigger or brighter. They'll always be in the same place and look the same. Although they had been seen for thousands of years, they weren't officially named until the 18th century when an astronomer named Charles Messier, who made it part of his life work to make a list of fuzzy cloud-like objects in the heavens so that he and other astronomers would not get confused when they went comet hunting. They're objects number six and seven on his fuzzy cosmic clouds, not to be confused with comets list. And today we use the first letter of Messier's last name when we refer to them. So they are now called M6 and M7. Now, although they really do look like decapitated comet heads to the naked eye, through binoculars they reveal themselves to be much different because they are far more grand than comets. Indeed, each tiny cloud is a great cluster of stars. Other suns far, far away. The one closer to the Stinger, M7, is a cluster of about 80 stars and is 800 light years away, which means that the light we see now is the light that left these stars 800 years ago, around 1200 AD, 300 years before Columbus set sail. The higher cluster, M6, also has about 80 stars in it, but you'll notice that it is quite a bit dimmer because it is exactly twice as far away as M7, 1,600 light years away, which means that we see the light that actually left these stars 1,600 years ago, around 400 AD about the time of the fall of the Roman Empire. Wow! So get thee out to see the two false comets of Scorpius this week and next, while there's no bright moonlight to hide them. Keep looking up! Make the Stars Your Own is available on DVD or VHS for 1995.